ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله بلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح الامه وكشف الغمه وجاهد في الله حق جهاده وتركنا على المحجه البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها الا هالك فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى اله واصحابه ومن سار على نهجهم واهتدى بسنته المهديين الى يوم الدين. اما بعد. My dear respected brothers and sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Imagine that you own a company here in Canada and you sent one of your employees to China to execute a specific project that it will take him one full year. And after his return, you ask him to write a detailed report about his journey. And surprisingly, he sent you a detailed report focusing only on his flight trip from Canada to China. From Canada to China. Uh, a journey that didn't exceed 17 hours comparing to the one full year uh, in the business trip where he described thoroughly and precisely all the difficulties that he faced in customs and uh, plane boarding. And also he talked about the excellent food uh, service on, on the plane and also some of the people that he met on that plane. My question to you here, my dear respected brothers and sisters, what is your honest feeling? What is your honest feeling when you receive such a report like that? Are you going to be happy? Are you going to be satisfied with what the report has covered? I assure you at least that you will be upset for the shallowness of that report. This feeling that you experience right now from the story that I told you right now is the same feeling that I experience every year. Every year. Not from this man. No. But believe it or not, I experienced it especially at the beginning of every new Hijrah year. I think it is unfortunate when we shrink the Hijrah lessons and projects that have been executed and lived by our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and his companions in the Medina over 10 years, over 10 years, to only cover eight days, just the eight days which is the road journey and the road trip that the Prophet ﷺ, he took from Mecca to Medina claiming that this is the real story of Hijrah. In the story of the Hijrah, the real story of the Prophet ﷺ, and the Sahaba, who were the Lord of Allah, in the Medina, on the road for 10 days, in the road of the Indimaj, in the road of the Dawah, in the road of the Islah, the Islah is on all kinds of things. الإصلاح الفكري والاجتماعي والأخلاقي والتربوي والسياسي والاقتصادي وحتى الصحي وحتى البيئي منه وكان يفعلها صلى الله عليه وسلم مع كافة مكونات المجتمع المسلم مع كافة, مع كافة مكونات مجتمع المدينة المختلفة مسلم وغير مسلم ويهودي ونصراني كافة الهوية وبضوابط كان يوازن فيها ما بين المحافظة على الهوية الإسلامية وما بين المواطنة a real hijra was the consistent strategic work of our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and his companions over the 10 years in Medina. The work in integrating and da'wah in all aspects of life, such as the moral, social, educational, intellectual, political, economical, and health, and even environmental reform. It was not just only as a group of Ghazawah. As unfortunately, a lot of people, yani they uh, read or narrate about this year of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the Medina. He sallallahu alaihi wasallam was introduced, was was interacting actually with all the different groups of the Medina society, while he balanced the preservation of the Islamic identity, al hifaz al hawiyya al-Islami, and the citizenship, al muwafaa. What we need today, as a Muslim immigrant here in Canada, is a new, deep, practical, and strategic reading of the whole Hijra story of our Prophet وسلم, in the Medina with its meanings, with its lessons, with its challenges and successes in integrating and influencing 
the community and society in the Medina over the 10 years, not just, not just the, the, the Hijra path. From here came my khutbah to you today, my dear respected brothers and sisters. It is an introduction for a series of khutbah. It's an introduction for a series of khutbah. I call it immigration and integration. Al-Hijrah wal intimash In this series, I aim to educate the immigrant Muslim community in Canada and even in the West about the most critical challenges that our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, he faced in his immigration and integration in the Medina. And we will try to cover in this series, insha'Allah, how the Prophet ﷺ, he dealt with the moral, social, educational, economical, political challenges and in a creative and innovative way. And how he executed the reforms in all these aspects. And uh, we mentioned that in a way for us to follow his example and his sunnah in facing our challenges and reform here in Canada. In this series, we will explore together how did the Prophet ﷺ, he built systematically and strategically the unique Islamic identity of, for both the Muslim individuals and the Muslim community to a degree that this identity became as a beacon, yani asbahat manara, that attract all the other identities to it. And this is the core of our da'wah. In other words, you won't be able to practice the da'wah if you don't have a distinctive Islamic identity. And therefore, I believe that the solution of Islamic identity, and the wabal al-hawiyya al-islamiyya, on the individual level, is not only an individual crime, but rather, it's a disruption, hiya ta'qib, to da'wah, and also it's a disruption to change the distorted stereotype image about Islam in the West. Most of the time, we blame the media for the distorted yani, stereotype image about the Islam in the West, and even the Islamophobia and other stuff. And for sure, they played the media, they played a major role over here in, in that issue. But we forgot, and that's the issue over here, but we forgot our crucial role in changing that, where we interact on a daily basis with the Canadian society from a zero distance, whether they are our neighbors, our customers, and even uh, our colleagues at work. The challenges that Prophet Muhammad he faced at his time are the same categories of challenges that we are facing right now with some differences for sure. And whether you like it or not, each one of us is gonna face these type of challenges on personal level, family, community, and even society levels. So, to succeed in overcoming these type of challenges while we study the seerah of our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in the Medina and reflecting that on our life through that series, we need to keep in mind four essential points in our approach to achieve that series successfully. The first important point, we need to be open-minded and creative uh, in, in ways of projecting the seerah and the biography of our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to our reality over here. And this is what I call fiqh seerah. The second important point that we need to be also practical in putting forward ideas and projects and initiatives for every aspect that we raise and discuss after each khutbah. And this is why uh, yani, uh, uh, the, the second part of each khutbah in that series, inshallah, I will dedicate it to a group of recommendations, lesson learned, and also uh, suggested projects that related directly to the subject of, the khutbah, of that khutbah. And the third point, each one of us should feel his responsibility and participation, their responsibility and participation in the reform process. Whether by creating initiatives in launching uh, new projects or contributing on the existing and the suggested projects that we will talk about. Each according to their desire, their specialty, their uh, uh, capabilities, their abilities. The fourth important point, also we need to understand that the reform project with its many aspects that I will mention is enormous, is huge. And you will see that clearly with that series. And you cannot be carried, and, 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 and that, that, that information by itself, it cannot be carried out by an individual or a single organization alone. Rather, it requires a concerted effort, tadafur jamia al 
all of all individuals, regardless of their nationalities, genders, ages, uh, young or old, and even their uh, specializations. And even we need in the future, inshallah, a combined and integrated effort of institutions and organizations. In another word, we need what I call a collaborative leadership. And we will talk about that later, inshallah, in one of our future khutbah in that series. نسأل الله تعالى أن يعلمنا ما ينفعنا وينفعنا بما علمنا وأن يجعلنا من من يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنا أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه فيتفوز المستغفرين الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه ومسار على نهجه مقتدى بسنته مهدهم إلى يوم الدين ما بعد My dear respected brothers and sisters What I covered in my first khutbah is just the introduction of a series of khutbah that I call Immigration and Integration and Hijra wal Indimaj and its objectives and I will try in the remaining time inshallah to cover some of the most important practical lessons on the Hijra path the one that lasted eight days as I mentioned before, from the real Hijra story. And I will mention the top five lessons due to the time limit. The first lesson of the Hijra path that I learned is that we need to research deeply for the reasons and motives for and intentions and niyyah for our immigration, our Hijra over here. And we need to review that. We all immigrants over here, and we came for different reasons. Some of us taking for political reasons, other for economic, third for uh, academic reasons, etc. So we need to make sure that our core cause, our intention, our niyyah of our immigration is connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His pleasure. And if it's not, we need to redirect and reprogram our intention from this moment, from this second, to that direction. And you can do that. You can change that intention if you are still in the process. And as they said, better now than never. This new reprogrammed intention will transform your immigration and daily routines that you are doing uh, from a habit to a worship. And he said, تحول أعمالنا من عادات إلى عبادات That you will be rewarded on every second from of it. And besides, you will get the success and support uh, and the blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your immigration journey and a great reward from Him in the hereafter. And my reference in that is the hadith of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. إنما الأعمال بالنيات وإنما لكل امرئ ما نوى فمن كانت هجرته إلى الله ورسوله فهجرته إلى الله ورسوله ومن كانت هجرته لدنيا يصيبها أو امرأة ينكحها فهجرته إلى ما هجر إليه. Which means the intention hold, it holds in, uh, the intentions holds holds actions, and every person will have what he intended. So whoever migrated to Allah and His Messenger, he is, uh, then his immigration was to Allah and His Messenger. That means he will take the reward in the dunya and the akhirah and the hereafter. And whoever has migrated to a worldly benefit and a woman to marry, his migration was to what he migrated to. So he will take his reward only in the dunya as narrated by Shaykh Khan. So let us set up our intentions as a practical, as a practice, to set up our intention right now on the cause of our hijrah and to make it purely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second lesson from the hijrah back, that we need a companion, even if you are a prophet. And you need to select your companions and friends carefully. The way that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he selected Abu Bakr Siddiq to be his companions in his hijrah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a good companionship in the dunya and the hereafter. The third lesson from the hijrah path is that starting projects and working to achieve goals is not limited to a specific age or time. And I can learn that because the Prophet wasallam, when he immigrated to establish the biggest project in his life in the, to the Medina, he was 53 years old. 53 years old. At that time, most of us will think about retirement and uh, what to do within a few years. Which means work and productivity are not limited to age in Islam. And we should not stop working until our last breath. The fourth lesson of the Hijra path, taking reasons, al-akhbil asbab, 
is the basis of for honest trust and reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يعني حسن الأخل بالأسباب هو من صدق التوكل على الله عز وجل. Despite of the greatness of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and his certainty that Allah Almighty يعني will support him and will protect him. He took all the reasons available to him and within his reach when he immigrated. He, he, he searched for a place to hide until the end of, uh, end of the Quraysh campaign to search for him. So he decided to resort to uh, Ghab Thaw, Cave of Thaw. Uh, and he walked opposite direction to the Medina. He went south rather than going to the north. He assigned a man to walk his sheep behind him to hide the footprints. He asked another man to convey the news uh, of, of the Quraysh to him. And he hired a, a guide to the road, and he was non-believer. The guide was non-believer at that time. And he assigned someone to bring him food and drink every day while he stayed in Ghartaw. And she was Asma' bint Abu Bakr So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and, and, and after that, he put his trust and reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before and why and after executing all of that. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who are good in taking reasons and relying on Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fifth and the final lesson of the Hijrah path is the utilization of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for all resources, ages, genders, and roles in his Hijrah journey. And subhanAllah, if you look at the spectrum of the people that he utilizes, Starting with the ages from 20s up to the 50s, from Ali ibn Abi Talib up to Abu Bakr Siddiq. If you talk about Muslims, believers, and non believers, also he utilizes in that hijrah. And also he utilizes the male and female in that hijrah. So we learn from that to succeed in our project, we need an effective utilization of resources. Because I think the problem that we have, we don't have a lack of resources. We have a lot of resources. Especially in the Muslim community, we have a lot of resources. The issue that over here we have it is the effective utilization of resources and integrating efforts, energies, and roles in all ages, genders in our community. كما صليت وسلمت وباركت على نبي على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد اللهم اجعل اجتماعنا هذا اجتماعا مرحوما واجعل تفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل من بيننا ولا فينا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم اهدنا لخير الاعمال والاقوال فانه لا يهدي لخيرها الا انت اللهم اهدنا واهد بنا واجعلنا سببا لمن اهتدى اللهم من اراد بالاسلام والمسلمين خيرا فوفقه لكل خير ومن اراد بالاسلام والمسلمين شرا فخذوا اهل عزيز مقتدر فانهم لا يعجزون اللهم انا نسالك من الخير كله عاجله واجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونعوذ بك من الشر كله عاجله واجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم اللهم انا نسالك من خير ما سالك منه نبيك وحبيبك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما سعادك منه نبيك وحبيبك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وإنهاء الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة